It's Saturday, April 27th. I'm Michelle Ross in the Fox 5 newsroom. Thank you for joining us live on the Fox Local app. The encampment at Columbia University still stands as pro-Palestinian student protesters say their demands from the school still haven't been met. They want the university to divest funds from companies they say profit off the Israel-Hamas war. But on Friday, it couldn't name which specific companies because they claim less than 1% is publicly disclosed. Former President Donald Trump's hush money trial wrapped up its second week after the third witness testified. Former National Enquirer publisher David Pecker explained how he suppressed negative stories about Trump during the 2016 campaign. Court will resume on Tuesday. Checking the forecast today, there will be sun and clouds with a high of 61 degrees. Tonight, expect showers and a low of 51 degrees. Tomorrow, rain in the morning, then sun and clouds later with a high of 74 degrees. Now, it's official. The MTA's controversial congestion pricing plan will start taking its toll on drivers on June 30th. This despite legal challenges. Fox 5's Sharon Crowley is on the Fort Lee side of the George Washington Bridge with more. It's going to place an undue burden on the commuters, uh, and uh, frankly, it's just a way for New Jersey to subsidize New York's budget failure. Some drivers may not like it, but the MTA says congestion pricing is coming to New York City. MTA Chair Jano Lieber announcing it will start June 30th. The choice of June 30th was, first of all, so there's time for a public information campaign for the word about discounts and exemptions in the application process after kids have gotten out of school and people are switching to the next phase of the year. The MTA chair is confident about that start date, despite the fact there are multiple lawsuits pending trying to block congestion pricing from moving forward. The mayor of Fort Lee, New Jersey, is involved in one of those legal fights. The start date disregards New Jersey, and they're even disregarding the lawsuits that we filed to, to either stop it or, uh, or recover what we believe to be on ongoing damages that we're going to sustain. He's concerned commuters trying to avoid the congestion pricing toll, which charges most drivers who go below 60th Street in Manhattan $15, will try to avoid it by taking the George Washington Bridge and going through Fort Lee. Look, Sharon, we cannot accept another car. We can't. We cannot. We have hundreds of thousands of cars that go through our municipality. Attorney Randy Mastro represents the state of New Jersey in a challenge to block congestion pricing. He expects a ruling in the next few weeks that may delay the implementation of this new toll. New Jersey is going to bear a huge portion of the financial burden as well as the environmental burden, without any benefits. And here in Fort Lee, New Jersey, they're just one of a number of towns trying to fight this through the courts. But you can expect, even though the MTA chair says congestion pricing is going to start at the end of June here in New Jersey, they'll do whatever they can to try to stop it. Sharon Crowley, Fox 5 News. An 11-year-old boy was hit by a bus in Brooklyn. It happened at 3 yesterday afternoon at the intersection of Flatlands Avenue and Hardin Street in the Flatlands neighborhood. Sky Fox was over the area. At last check, the boy was taken to the hospital in stable condition. The bus driver remained at the scene, and an investigation is underway. New developments in the police search on Long Island that sources tell us is linked to the, to the Gilgo Beach serial killings. The Suffolk County DA says teams of investigators have expanded the search beyond Manorville. On Friday, they were combing through a wooded area in the community of North Sea in the Hamptons. It's the same site a murdered woman's body was found back in 1993. That case remains unsolved. Here's a question for you. Does the gender of your doctor matter when it comes to the quality of care you'll get? As Fox 5 as Jessica Formoso shows us, according to a new study, it does. According to a new study, patients treated by female doctors at a hospital are less likely to die or be readmitted to the hospital than those treated by male doctors. The study, which was published in the Annals of Internal Medicine, looked at post-operative outcomes, specifically how likely a patient is to die 30 days, 90 days, and a year after surgery. In each of these studies, we've shown that if you have a female surgeon, you are less likely to die in any of those fixed time points than if you had a male surgeon. However, the overall benefit of receiving care from a female physician was greater for women than for men. There appears to be more than just the effect of um, care from a female physician, but also that interaction between the, the female physician and a female patient really giving better outcomes for that female patient than when they're treated by 
uh, a male physician. And although there isn't one clear answer as to why women fare better with female physicians, Chris Wallace, urologic oncologist at Mount Sinai Hospital and University Health Network, says other studies suggest they spend more time with their patients than men do. And we also know that there's differences in communication styles, so women uh, elicit more information from their patients. In addition to spending more time, they get more uh, information out of the patients, so, so that may help, um, you know, a female physician better understand a patient's priorities and help come to a treatment plan together that better aligns with that patient. Sharon, who has had both male and female doctors in the past, says her now female physician is a lot more thorough. She takes a lot more time to ask me more questions and is does a lot more follow-up. And with your male doctor that you had in the past, uh, did he not do that? Not as much, no. The study looked at nearly 800,000 female and male Medicare patients hospitalized from 2016 through 2019. On the Upper East Side, I'm Jessica Formoso, Fox 5 News. An emotional ceremony as two NYPD officers whose heroic fathers were shot in the line of duty were promoted Friday. Officer Francesca Mosamilo was just a young girl when her dad, Anthony Mosamilo, was killed in 1998. She was promoted to detective and will be issued her father's old shield number. Also at the ceremony, Lieutenant Connor McDonald promoted to captain. His father, Stephen McDonald, was paralyzed after being shot in 1986, but lived for more than 30 years with the help of a ventilator before passing away in 2017. Dad suffered through a lot of pain, uh, being shot three times, uh, stuck to a respirator for 30 and a half years, unable to move. So I witnessed his pain and suffering, but also his love for this job, and it always motivated me. And Officer Rob Rodriguez, who helped rescue people during the miracle on the Hudson, was promoted to detective. Well, it's the latest trend for newlywed couples taking a mini moon before the big honeymoon. Fox 5's Teresa Priolo takes a closer look at why so many couples are opting to do this. It's one of those life events best classified by if you know, you know. Weddings, however wonderful, can be outrageously stressful, after which the need for a break is never more necessary. But let's face it, without endless PTO, for many of us, the best option is a mini moon. A mini moon is basically a traditional honeymoon's younger sibling. Allison Coleman is with Zola, a wedding planning website. She tells us a mini moon can be anything, anywhere, as long as you and your partner are together. But typically, it's a long weekend, no more than five days, and a departure from what may ultimately be the honeymoon. It's not about where you go. It's not about how much money you spend. It's not about the length. It's having that time after you are pulled in a lot of different directions and everyone is looking at you and celebrating you to really spend time with each other. Mini moons aren't new. They've been around for years, but the popularity of them picked up post-COVID when married couples wanted to be strategic with their use of paid time off. For so many people, vacation time is the biggest factor in as to why they are not taking the honeymoon right away. When trying to determine if a mini moon is right for you, consider this. Any couple who is planning a bigger wedding and is likely taking time off before the wedding, so we're thinking destination couples, couples who are uh, hosting multiple days of events and need more time, or couples who really want to go on that far-flung honeymoon, want to do something close to home. Top destinations include places that are easy to get to and easy to get around. We see anecdotally that couples are picking mini moon locations that are either within a few hour driving distance and locations that have a sentimental value. The number one tip, if you do a mini moon and also plan a honeymoon, make sure they are wildly different. Teresa Priolo, Fox 5 News. Perhaps cats really do have nine lives. A cat named Galena, who was thought to be lost in Utah, was found several states away. Galena's owner says she mysteriously vanished earlier this month. But their prayers were answered when they got a call from, a, from an Amazon employee who found the cat in a box. Galena is doing just fine. Now, one final check of the forecast. Today, there will be sun and clouds. Tonight, we can expect showers and a low of 51 degrees. And uh, that's about it that we have for this, uh, this morning. That does it for us. I'm Michelle Ross. Have a great day. And remember, Fox 5 News is always streaming here on the Fox local app.